just don't forget to take your phone out. <laughs> Hi everyone, I'm Christina from That Canadian Teacher. If you know what these are, then you know what today's video is all about. These are Google Cardboards. I got this one from Historica Canada. They graciously donated it to us after the Canada 150 event, and they were great until they're not. <laughs> Google used to have an app called Google Expeditions where you could use these viewfinders to look at various places around the world, historical sites, um, landmarks, underwater, all kinds of things um, using the viewfinders and you could see them in a 360 degree view that had sort of the look as though it was 3D when you look through the, the viewfinder. They did away with this, so. However, you can still use the 360 degree views that Google established in their Expeditions app. They've now migrated that over to Google's Arts and Cultures. So in today's video, I'm going to show you how to access those resources and what you can do with those 360 degree views. Now, Google Expeditions and now Google Arts and Culture aren't the only places on the internet that you can get 360 degree panoramic views of locations. If you go to YouTube, there are quite a few YouTube videos that will show you locations uh, in a 360 degree view. One that comes to mind in particular is a 360 degree look at Vimy Ridge that's hosted by Peter Mansbridge. During the Vimy 100 ceremonies, uh, CBC went into the underground tunnels, went to the historic site and took 360 degree uh, video of that location. And so you can use that YouTube video and the kids would just uh, uh, use their fingers to uh, look at the 360 degree view. So you could use something like that. Um, I'm sure just doing a simple Google search of 360 degree video will pop up um, quite a few options for you if that's something that you're interested in. Um, but today's video is going to specifically to be talking about what you can do with the Google Arts and Culture page and introducing you to that 360 degree migration of the expeditions uh, artifacts to the Google Arts and Culture. So let's get right to it. Okay, so we're at the Google Arts and Culture page and I'll put the URL for that at the top of the screen here, but you can uh, also access it by just Googling Google Arts and Culture. And so um, the process I'm gonna show you is a little bit complicated, but I'm gonna show you how you can easily give your students um, the direct link as well. And then I'll talk about the ways in which I use uh, these 360 degree views in my uh, classroom and specifically in my Canadian history class, but there's loads of other subject areas that you can apply the 360 views to as well. So once you're at this page, you're going to select the three hot dogs at the top left hand corner, and you're going to go down to themes. So once you're at themes, you're going to scroll down. And then when you see learn with Google arts and culture, you're going to select that. I mean, feel free to also explore some of the other options that are there as, as well. But for our purposes, we're going to go here. And once you're here, you can also favorite it or you can grab the uh, URL if you want. If you favorite it, it's going to show up in the top right hand corner here under favorites. And then you're going to scroll down and you're going to look for view all the field trips. So you're going to select view. So once you're at this page, you're going to see that there's 418 stories. Now you can certainly uh, just break browse what they have available here for you. There's loads of historical sites. Uh, so for example, here is, you know, a look at some photographs from World War One. Um, you have Mayan, Mayan ruins, um, medieval ruins in Britain and France. Um, there's geographic things like electrical grids, like you saw up there. There's scientific is uh, issues and topics um, like biodiversity, um, museums of science, CERN, all kinds of stuff. So pick what's kind of, you know, of your interest. But if there's something that you know of in particular, you can actually type it up here in the search bar and it will refine your search a little bit more. So if I typed in, let's say World War, so you're going to see all of the kinds of things that pop up relevant to World War. So if I'm looking for something relevant to, let's say, D-Day invasion, um, I could select um, this here. But I'm, I'm looking specifically for one that I use in my class, which is called Reconstructing 
the World War I trenches. So you can see that it's um, listed here. So you're going to see here that there's actually two options for the reconstructing World War I trenches, one that looks like a book and one that looks like a, an image. If we go to the one that looks like an image, now you'll see here it says view in augmented reality. So if I selected that, um, it looks like there's going to be an app called Art Projector. Editing Christina here, I checked out Art Projector to see what I could find. Um, there is no app called Art Projector, but when you click on the link there that says download in the App Store, it takes you to the Google Arts and culture app. Now the app does have the reconstructing the World War One trenches, but it's not as intuitive. What it does have is um, the ability to look at images a little bit more in depth. So if that's something that you want to look at or artifacts that they have in terms of the expedition experiences, it may not be user friendly at the point of this filming, but it might be something that you want to check out. Now back to the video. So we're going to go back to uh, our main page here, uh, the World War One trenches again, we're going to go to the one with the book. Now the one with the book actually has uh, information attached to each of the images. And I'll show you what I mean by that. So here's the, I guess, I don't want to say homepage because it's all on the same page, but the top um, banner of this particular expedition or what used to be an expedition. Um, now you can favorite it here. So if I select favorites, it's now going to show up in my favorites section. So you'll see there it is. So I can easily access it as long as I'm in my account. I can easily access that, um, that, that, expedition very quickly. So that may be something that you want to do. Now, if you want to share it with your students, there is the URL that you can uh, copy it into your clipboard and then just paste it into your Google Classroom or whatever uh, learning management software that you're using. You can also put this into your various social medias or again um, uh, into Classroom and there's the, the, the link as well. So if we just scroll downwards, you're going to see that there's some text that's on the left hand side and sometimes it will appear actually on the page as well. But we're going to go a little bit further. So this first one, um, this first image, you can actually even uh, look at it, at it more in depth. So if I click on it, um, I can actually zoom into this picture. So on the right hand side, I can actually go more uh, closer to, uh, to see what's happening in the image. Now it doesn't go too close. I mean, it's only got the capabilities that it has, um, but it, that is an option, especially if you're looking at a piece of artwork. Um, you may want to have the students look at something a little bit more in depth. So I'm just going to go a little bit downward. Now, these images are what you would have seen in the expedition itself. Now, what a student can do, and especially if they have a, like, let's say an iPad or a phone, this is a little bit easier to do. They would just use their finger and swipe along the screen, and it would allow them to see the 360 degree view. Now, now, if you're on a computer, you'll have to use your mouse and you might be able to hear the clicking of my mouse in the background, but um, it will let you see the 360 degree view of the expedition. Um, so you can see here, these are some World War One reenactors. I'm assuming this is somewhere in France um, and they're uh, reenacting a trench scenario. So you can see if you look closely, there are artifacts of the war, right? So you have, you know, the periscope, the the uh, trench shovel, you have the rifles, um, you have medical personnel, and on and on. And if we scroll down a little bit more, you'll see that it also includes a little blurb about what's happening in this scene. And if you just continue scrolling down, now the first couple of scrolls will be the same um, image, but it will give you new uh, text here. Um, but if you continue to scroll downward, eventually it's going to move on to the next what I call room. So you'll see here it's moved on to a new one called Treating the Injured. And uh, and so again, you can go in 360 degree view uh, and look at what's happening in that scene. Now, how I use this in my classroom is I have the students answer a series of questions relevant to the experience of a trench soldier. So they would have to look around in this uh, particular location and see what they notice. So you know, I don't point anything out. I let them kind of explore and see what comes up when they're looking at the 360 degree view and exploring all of those rooms. And so the students will notice some of these artifacts. They will notice the conditions, the weather conditions. Like if you look closely, it looks like there's water on the trench periscope. So that means that it was raining. Um, you know, so what would the conditions be like for these men that are in, this, in the trenches wearing a wool jacket, for example. And so the students can kind 
kind of explore that um, that experience. So this is what I have students do when they're in the room. So you can see that the questions are very much about the experience that they are uh, being, you know, they're a part of. So look around you. What do you see? What kinds of smells or sounds can you imagine? What sorts of equipment do you see? Describe what everyday life must be like for the soldiers. Now, I've also included the very the titles of the rooms. And if we come back here, you'll see that that's actually, you know, if we go a little bit up to the top here. So you'll see that's the title. That was the title of the room in Google Expeditions. So you may want to kind of orient them to which location you're having them look at. So maybe in the first section, you know, the one titled Life in the Trenches, this is what you want them to see from that particular room. Um, room. So I have them look at the types of image uh, equipment, life, what life was like, the conditions and how they may have changed, what what a soldier might need to survive in battle, what sort of feelings or emotions might they have experienced. So this is building up empathy within the students for the experiences of those soldiers that are living through World War One. And so, and you can see uh, at the bottom there, I have them make a, con uh, a conclusion as to what that experience was like for them in the short and long term. Now, since we're on the topic of the First World War, for my Canadian history friends, I'm just going to kind of point out to you that there is actually an exploration for the Canadian National Vimy Memorial. Um, and so you'll get actually a room that's similar to that. And let's we can save that there um, that shows you around the uh, the Vimy Memorial. And so you can do a 360 degree view of what that looks like and see some of the up close details of that um, memorial. For my friends that teach civics, there is actually a uh, Parliament Hill one. So I can show you that one quickly. We'll favorite it here. Um, and so you can actually have a look at Parliament Hill and the Prime Minister's office. So there's some really cool opportunities with expeditions and um, to give the students an opportunity to see these locations up close, especially in an era where travel may not be you know, financially possible or physically possible. For my friends that are more interested in other uh, other histories, world histories, there are things like the code breakers. Uh, so this is going to show you like the Enigma machine, for example, and what it looks like up close. It also sometimes you'll see uh, photographs will be included in some of these expeditions and it gives you, you know, an opportunity to kind of explore, you know, this is uh, Bletchley, right? Um, so it gets you kind of see what's going on in that location. Um, so definitely, you know, this is something I wouldn't sleep on, right? Uh, there's lots of amazing artifacts that are here, you know, from all walks of life, um, all subject areas, uh, you know, not just history, but certainly this is kind of advantageous for history, especially if you want to um, show different parts of the world for world religions, same, same idea. There's uh, loads of um, religious points of interest that are located here in the expeditions. Um, so definitely I would encourage you to have a look at those 400 plus expeditions that are available to you and, you know, have your students explore them. Maybe have them create a travel itinerary, um, you know, maybe explore more specifically and in depth, you know, what they're seeing in that location. So hopefully today's video was helpful to you in finding ways to go out with the old and in with the new. If you have any other ideas on how teachers can use Google Arts and Culture or specifically what used to be Google Expeditions in their classroom, feel free to leave it in the comment section below. If you want, feel free to also give me a follow on my social medias. I'll put them over on the side here. And I hope you have a great rest of the day and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.